anyway, what I was thinking about was uh, before I get into the Great Escape, um, and I'm going to be Steve McQueen in this. As a, no, probably don't even know what it is. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, I, I want to pray for uh, um, just miracles. And uh, I was going to ask you if you don't, if you're not embarrassed to do this, but if you need a miracle, would you pray, raise your hand? If, if you need a miracle and somebody else, there's there's got to be somebody else that you want to represent that needs a miracle, right? And uh, it may not be you, but I'll tell you, People are going through so much. They need miracles. Heavenly Father, for every hand that is raised, everyone in this congregation, everyone that's in this family, Father, you know who each and every one of them are. Some need a healing miracle, financial miracle, relationship miracle, whatever it is, Father. I pray that there will be signs, wonders, and miracles following right now the mighty and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, as hands are raised, as hearts are lifted up to you, I ask, Father God, answer their prayers. May there be supernatural healings, you taking care of finances, you taking care of families. Bless them, bless them, bless them, I pray, Father. In the mighty and awesome name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray all of this. Amen. 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 Now the great escape. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks to the Father who qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. In your notes, underline that kingdom of light, that we have received that kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Amen. All of those things. So as we look at the great escape, I just want to jump right into it. Roman numeral number one. We have escaped from darkness to light. We have escaped from darkness to light. We've been rescued from all elements of darkness, all of it, and brought into the kingdom of his beloved son, Jesus Christ, in the kingdom of light. And so this word rescued, number one, rescued, means to liberate, to save from danger, to deliver someone from something or someone. And on my own personal notes, I underlined again, we've been rescued from something, and in some cases, from someone. Just think about that just for a moment. Rescued from that. And I thought, wow, God is watching over us. He's protecting us. He's delivering us, and he's rescuing us from something. Whatever, listen, whatever your something is today, he wants to rescue you from it. And that's for everybody listening on live streaming that isn't here today. A lot of people need to be delivered and, and, and rescued. It's like um, from a fire, burning building. You know, 9-11 comes, they rescue people. They pull them out. They risk their lives and they save people risk from floods. I mean, it goes on and on and on. I think about that and I thought, wow, rescued you and I. And again, I emphasize from someone or something. Okay. Sometimes it just happens and it could be more in your own personal life. But I just thought about that. Boy, earthquakes, all these other things. We're saved. We're saved. We're rescued. And from dominion, number two, dominion. It means strength, power, or control, a ruling force which you have no control over. A ruling force which you have no control over. But, 
and you can put but in there. We have been given power to overcome. You and I have been given power to overcome. Why greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? So nothing, although it talks about what we've been rescued for, this dominion and things that may have control over us, you're free today. You're free today. Right now, you're free. And number three is darkness. It means ignorance, sorrow, wickedness, misery, destruction, sin, and fear. And one of the things that always hits me is this word fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, right? So this fear thing, don't allow it to creep in. Do not allow it to creep in. Expect miracles. Don't allow fear to creep in and discourage you at all. Because you have overcome everything by the blood of the Lamb, by the power of the Holy Spirit indwelled within you. Amen? And so, as I think about this, when people walk in darkness, basically two things happen. One, you cannot see things as they really are. Okay, you can just write this. I don't think it's in your notes. Or is it? Okay. You write it down if you want to. But when you walk in darkness, you can't see things as they really are. Um, darkness has a way of distorting things. It distorts them. You don't, you don't get a clear picture. Um, darkness changes the perspective of things that you're looking at. And so we have to understand we've been delivered from that. We can see clearly. We can understand clearly. We've escaped from darkness into light. And then the second thing about darkness, you can't see where you're going. If it's dark, I mean genuinely dark, you can't see where you're going. And I talk to more people, including myself. I don't even like to drive my car at night anymore. Maybe you don't care. Lights flash in my eyes, they blind me, and then I open up my eyes and I can't see a cotton picking thing. It's dark, you know, you're going around a curve, and I'm going, Whoo! I can't see as clearly as I'd like in the dark. Maybe you can, and thank God that you can. But what happens when people walk in the dark, they can't see where they're going, they don't have a proper perspective of things. So thank God he's rescued you and I, the great escape, and brought us into the kingdom of light. We can see. So what does the kingdom of light do for you and I? It has two great things. Number one, perspective. Perception and perspective. We have perception very clear. We can see things as they are. So when we walk in the light, we can identify and see very clearly what's going on. All you have to do is sit back, Allow the Holy Spirit to give you a clear-cut vision of what's going on. God will speak to you. He'll tell you exactly what's happening. As we are experiencing the great escape, we escape from darkness into this marvelous light. We can see now. We can see clearly. We can understand. The real from the imaginary, superficial, all this other stuff, we can see clearly. And God provides that because now we walk. And we have to think about this, walking in the kingdom of light. I'm walking in the kingdom of light all the time. John 8, 32 and 31 says, And we can know and see the truth, and the truth does what? Sets us free. The truth of Jesus Christ sets you and I free. Free from worries, cares, anxiety, whatever, we're free. And we walk in the light, not in darkness. Number two, when we walk in the light, we have clear direction. We, we can see and know where we're going and how to get there. Very important. And what I put down in my own notes, I want to know where I'm going in my journey of life. In my journey of life. I want to know what's happening. I want the Holy Spirit to tell me. I want the Holy Spirit to be my power, my comforter, my counselor, my guide, to lead and direct every step I take as well as every step you take. We want to have clear direction, don't we? We want to understand that. John 9, 25 says, and I, I put, that's not the actual scripture there. I just put, you got, is it in your notes? 
And, and I have, uh, it is like once we were blind, now we see. Okay, that's kind of me throwing in my thought on that scripture, okay? Same way with John 8, um, 12. Jesus is the light of the world, isn't he? He's the light of the world. Because Jesus Christ is the light of the world, it says, our light will guide and direct our path. The light of Jesus Christ will guide and direct our path. Every single step we take every single day, okay? I, wanna, I don't know about you, but I want to know what's going on. I don't like life to be a mystery. I want to walk the path of life. I want it to be illuminated. I want to know God's direction of my life for tomorrow. I'm living out today. I'm praying that I do have a tomorrow. If I don't have a tomorrow, thank God, I'll see you up in heaven. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So God will direct our steps if we'll just depend on him and let his light illuminate every step we take. Now, some of you at work, you need the light of Jesus Christ to guide and direct and lead you. Um, uh, when I talked to Jeff, I don't know if I mentioned about not drowning in, in the water and sharks eating you alive. That's at work. Am I correct? I mean, so you need some light and some guidance, right? I'm not picking on you. Is it all right? It's okay. All right. All right. Because we're all, if you want to, sometimes we're just swimming and there's sharks all around us. And they just want to eat you alive. And you're just trying to stay afloat. Right? God is there as our light. And even in the midst of that, he'll teach you how to swim like you've never swum before. You will be fast and strong and quick and escape. Right? Because he will illuminate your path. And he'll give you the light. He brings us number. And I, I wrote this in. I underlined it. The light brings us comfort. Comfort and security. Comfort is very, very, very important. In a world of stress to have the comfort of the Lord. And then I know I'm secure. I know I'm secure. Roman numeral number two. We have escaped from slavery to freedom. From slavery to freedom. We're no longer, if you will, slaves to this world system, to this current culture, which I don't understand. Um, you know, well, I don't want to get into it. I don't get it. I don't, names have to be changed. You can't say this word. You can't say that. You can't do this. You can't do that. You if you do this, then you're this and you're that. And I mean, it goes on and on and on and on, this current culture. I, I thank God I'm free from it. I don't care. The great escape has happened. Bill's gone. Right? Don't allow the culture or the world to shape you. Allow the kingdom of God and the kingdom of light to shape you. Amen? Amen? So as we look at this, and we've been redeemed and the forgiveness of sins, number one, we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. 1 John 4, 4, 2. Greater is he that lives in you than he that is in the world. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. All my sins are forgiven. All my sins are forgotten. All my hidden faults are gone. It's a new day. Yesterday is gone. It's gone. I've been redeemed by the, you know, I, that's a great song too. I was going to sing it, but then you think I'm nuts. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Filled with the Holy Ghost I am. All my sins are under the blood. I've been redeemed. Not bad, huh? It should be a Mel Hall rock song. No offense. What? It, it, it should be in studio mixture of music and it'll be in there. People will love it. Okay, whatever you said, I agree with you. It should be in a band from today. This band will love to get that kind of stuff, you know, put in music. Okay. All right. 
Number two, let's move on. We are free from guilt, fear, and sin. Free. This guilt is a big deal. We're free from guilt. Free from any sin. We confess our sins and what? He's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins, cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If you make a mistake, you mess up, Lord, forgive me, and then move on. All right? Lord, okay, I, I messed that one up. I shouldn't have said it that way. I'm sorry, Father, forgive me. Uh, you know, guard my mouth. May I say things correctly from here on out and pronounce them correctly as well. That's also the big deal. Anyway, we're free from that. Number three, we are residents of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light. That's where we live now. That's where we reside. And we can say no to the kingdom of darkness. We can say no to the culture of this world. We can say no to all of those things because we're walking in the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God. James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he'll do what? He'll flee. Resist him and he'll flee from you. Now we have control because we have the power of the Holy Spirit indwelled within us. And again, thank God for the Holy Spirit, who's our comforter, our counselor, our guide, and our power. Power, 24-7. The power never shuts off. It's there all the time. And I thank the Lord for that because we reside in the kingdom of light. Because of that, we can walk in power and authority over those things that try to come against you and I. Amen? Joshua 24, 15 says, But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Not the world, not the things going on in the world. We're going to serve God Almighty, period. That's it. And we can know the love of God, and we can serve God freely. That's good news. And lastly... Roman numeral number three, we have been rescued from condemnation to forgiveness. We're not condemned anymore. We're set free. Prison doors have opened. We're out the door. We're free. Free as a bird, right? Romans 8, 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. Set me free. Set me free. It's all because of the cross of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's all because of the blood of the Lamb that was shed for you and I sets us free. We have complete freedom in Christ. That is good news. The great escape. And then lastly, it's kind of long, Romans 8, 33, but um, that is in your notes, right? Okay, I'm, I'm going to read it anyway. Who will bring any change against those whom God has chosen? Is it not God who justifies? Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who is raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Interceding for you and I all the time. Do you need intercessory prayer very often? All the time, right? All the time. Be comforted to know that Jesus Christ intercedes for you all the time. On your behalf. You're never alone. I know people I've talked to that they feel all alone. They could be married and have 25 kids. They still feel alone. But God says, no, no. I'm with you all the time. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm there all the time. 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, or sword? I don't want to encounter any of that stuff. As is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. That's not very good news, is it? I mean, that's not comforting at all. But I circled verse 37. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That may not be your list that you're going through. And I just circled this thing, I underlined it, and I thought, boy, I don't know. Uh, famine, yeah, that might, persecution, yeah, that, that comes, hardships, yep. Whatever you're going through right now, I want you to know right now, you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Regardless of what tests and trials you're going through, you are more than conquerors right this very moment. Dave, Debbie, whatever he's going through, he's more than a conqueror. Right? Linda Sprague is more than a conqueror. Chris Grimager, they're all hardly able to walk or get up or move or anything. And yet God says, in spite of that, they are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. More than conquerors. That's good stuff. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in us through Christ Jesus our Lord. That's good news. And then lastly, and I close with this for, we have escaped from the power of Satan to the power of God. That's the great escape, isn't it? That's the great escape. From Satan to the power of God, to the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what you may need or not need to escape from. It could be a hundred different things. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you right now, I believe that God will meet every single need you have. I'm praying for signs, wonders, and miracles to follow the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's for all of you, including me and my family. That's for all of us, everybody listening on live streaming. God wants to bless you with signs, wonders, and miracles. And I'm gonna just, jump out here too. Expect it. Expect it to happen. If you expect it, that means that you believe it. And you'll watch it unfold before your very eyes. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for the great escape. Thank you for your word. Oh, Father, and we lift up every missionary as well. Aaron and Kazakhstan, Gopal, Grenada, Israel, all over the place, Father. Bless every missionary as well today that they can experience the great escape wherever they may be. Bless them and may they be fruitful and multiply. And Father, bless everyone here today, I pray. In the mighty and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen.